Hi everybody, Jasmine here. So, okay, I am coming at you with a video that has been requested a lot of me, um, and I have gotten this question so many times, so I just decided I really wanted to make an informative video that just has all the information you need to know. So we are gonna talk today about Parkinson's and COVID-19. Okay, so this is a really big topic right now. As you all know, the world has gone completely in chaos because of COVID, um, and for good reason. Now, the biggest question I keep getting asked is this, do I need to worry about Parkinson's and contract potentially contracting COVID-19? And the answer to that is yes. Um, and I don't want to panic you, and I don't want everyone to go into like an extreme panic and, you know, do things that don't make any sense, but you do need to worry. And you do need to take this seriously um, and your priority needs to be not contracting this virus um, because it is dangerous with Parkinson's. So first let's, let's, let's take it like multiple steps back and let's talk about what the heck a virus even is, um, which is something that is surprisingly not all that known. Um, I'm surprised by how many people have like a very, very, very basic or even like wrong understanding of what a virus is. Um, so we're used to bacteria we're even used to like, um, you know, pathogenic yeast infections, but we're not used to, we're not, um, we don't discourse nearly enough about viruses in our society. Um, you know, one big virus is obviously influenza. And that's why I very strongly recommend a flu shot to everybody with Parkinson's for the same reason that I'm recommending precautions for COVID. And that is because of the respiratory issue with Parkinson's. Parkinson's does not directly attack your lungs but if you die of parkinson's you're statistically likely to die of aspiration pneumonia and of lung issues for a couple reasons one you have um so let's talk about muscles so parkinson's affects skeletal muscles okay like those like your leg muscles your arm muscles they don't directly affect your organ muscles like your lungs um but you do still have to have that, like, to cough up phlegm and to clear your lungs. You do have to have a certain amount of muscle um, control, and that partially does come from skeletal muscle. Um, and so people with Parkinson's, oftentimes when we get respiratory illnesses, they tend to be worse. Um, also, there's the issue of aspiration pneumonia. If you swallow wrong and get pneumonia, you know, there's that issue. Now, if you're already having that weakened state um, and you contract COVID, you're in, you're in trouble. The other big issue is the CDC has said that when people who have neurological issues contract COVID, it's statistically significant that the cases that people who are who have um, who have neurological issues who do contract it, those cases are significantly more serious. So not only do you have a potential of if you get COVID nineteen to not be able to clear it up in the same way and to have you know delayed issues with your actual healing, you also are at a higher risk of getting a much more severe disease. Um, and when there is a fairly decently high fatality rate, people with Parkinson's need to be careful. And it needs to be a priority to not catch this disease and you need to take this seriously. And that means when you go out, you should follow CDC guidelines. You should wear a mask and you should wear gloves and you should sanitize the hell out of everything. I don't want you to panic, but you do need to take this seriously. Okay, let's, let's take a couple steps back and talk about what the heck COVID even is. Um, and that, you know, we talked about what a virus is. Viruses do not respond to antibiotics and we do not have good antivirals um, that can even touch this. If you're in the hospital for COVID, they're not really giving you medication. What they're giving you, if you're in the hospital for COVID, is they're giving you fluid, nutrition, artificially, and they're going to be giving you um, lung medications like steroids, or um, inhaled um, epinephrine, that kind of a thing, to keep your lungs open, to give you the best chance of clearing out your airway. But there's no medication that can directly affect COVID and we're about a year away from a vaccine. And that, that should make everybody nervous because vulnerable populations, like people with Parkinson's, are more likely if you get, if you get COVID, like let's just say it for what it is, if you get COVID, you're more likely to die of COVID than anyone else. And that's heavy. Um, and I'm sorry, and I wish that wasn't true, but it is, and that's why I'm making this video, so that way you have the information you need to protect yourself. So let's talk about coronaviruses. So coronaviruses are a class of viruses, and they're nothing new. 
Actually, some of the common colds that go around are actually coronaviruses. Um, if you get like um, a virus where you have kind of like a, a heavy, like a cough, those tend to be coronaviruses. Um, the other, so the, the, last, the past two severe coronaviruses in recent history have been SARS and MERS. Um, and I think everybody older than millenn- like millennials on up, we all remember both of these. We remember SARS and we remember MERS. SARS was in the early 2000s and MERS was in um, the beginning of the last decade. I think it was 2012. I think it was in college for that one. Um, anyways, so SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome and MERS was Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Um, Now, here's why that's important. So they were actually very similar. Actually, COVID-19, the actual virus, the coronavirus was, um, I mean, it's a type of coronavirus, but everyone was referring to to it colloquially as the coronavirus. Um, SARS, um, this this virus, this 2019 one, was actually called SARS, was actually called originally SARS-CoV-2. Think SARS 2.0. That's essentially what we're looking at here. And it's already showing that it has potential to be a lot worse. Now, here's the issue um, regionally. So, the Middle East, think about it. It's hot and deserty. Okay, SARS got better when summer hit, when the climate got more arid and dry. MERS did not. MERS got worse um, once the, the temperature raised and it got drier which is concerning because we don't know which way this is going to go. So that's the issue with COVID-19 is we don't know if it's going to get worse in the next couple months or if it's going to get better in the next couple months. So that's really concerning. My personal prediction, and no one can say, I think it's going to get worse. Um, I think it's going to be hit more like MERS than it's going to be like SARS um, because of the areas that it's hitting. Because... um, We've seen it hit pretty extensively in Southeast Asia where the climate's pretty, pretty warm. So, you know, that's concerning. Um, As far as things getting canceled, if you cannot travel right now, don't travel right now. Do not plan any travel for the next couple months, Um, which is hard. I mean, my fiance and I, we might cancel our wedding, Um, which would be heartbreaking. But the idea of 200 people traveling and all of them hugging us terrifies me Uh, and so I want you to know that like I'm doing this too this advice that I'm giving you I'm doing it too every time I go to the store I'm wearing a face mask and I'm gloving up because I don't want to catch COVID because I know in my state with having fairly advanced Parkinson's like I will die Um, and I don't want to die I have a lot to do Um, and you know we've made good grounds in my work and I'm very excited about the future so I'm trying not to die and I'm sharing this information with you because I know you're trying not to die Um, But yeah, so take this seriously. Send your relatives and friends to the grocery store, reach out. There, you know, I've seen in community pages that people saying, if anyone's immunosuppressed or elderly, you know, um, or, you know, can't go to the store for whatever reason, there are people who are, you know, who are out of work for COVID or volunteering to go to the store for you without, you know, for no no fee. You know, you just pay them and they'll they'll go to the store. Um, Rely on the kindness of your neighbors and rely on the kindness of each other and take care of each other. Um, because this is important Um, because that's how we're going to get through this is by all supporting each other and by everybody taking the precautions don't have a party you know listen listen to the cdc and listen to experts when they're telling us that this is bad and we need to take precautions so it doesn't get worse because people are going to die and people are dying and the people who are dying are people like us with Parkinson's and with other severe illnesses, people who are immunocompromised, people with other neurological disease, the elderly, those are who are going to get this um, and who those who are, who are going to get it severely and those are issues. Um, and in addition, your family members also should be taking the same risks. I always say that Parkinson's is a family affair. Parkinson's is not a disease that you have alone. It's a disease you have a support community for. Um, and they need to be taking the same precautions too because if they get sick, you're gonna get sick. So, you know, if you have a 20 year old kid who's running around every day, they should be staying in. And it's okay to tell them that. Um, I'm gonna link in the comments of this, a really good video from Italy. Um, and it's Italians. Mind you, Italy right now is about 10 days in front of us as far as this plague, <laughs> you know, as far as this, this outbreak, this pandemic. They're about 10 days in front of us, and it's been very severe there. 
and Italians have been saying, hey, America, UK, like the rest of the world that's not um, got this yet, don't, 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 don't let this, don't take unnecessary risks, don't make this worse. They're saying they wish they'd all taken this more seriously 10 days ago, and we're still in a place in this country in America and in the UK and in other areas where it hasn't been hit so far. We're in a place to make this better, and that's important um, because it doesn't have to be as bad as it is. If everybody takes precautions, we're going to be okay. Um, I mean, we're not going to be okay. People are going to die, but less people are going to die, and the more people we can save with this, the better it is, and I think that needs no explanation. Um, yeah. So Parkinson's also in addition, when there's any kind of illnesses, it worsens Parkinson's symptoms. The thing with COVID is there's, there's, there's so many effects, right? There's the idea that we already are in extreme danger of respiratory illnesses. There's the issue that our bodies are not as strong, we can't fight it off. You know, there's the addition that if we get it, it's going to be more severe. It's going to worsen our Parkinson's. And it's just going to be a, a stupid circle. Um, you know, it's going to be a stupid circle of, you know, one thing making the other worse, making the other worse. It's going to be a catch-22. So it's important you don't get it. Um, and I know I've literally spent the last 11 minutes and 30 seconds saying that. But this is important. Um, so take precautions. Follow guidelines keep up with today and support each other and we're going to be okay over and out <laughs>